I'll use this table to tell a story. While the story is fictional, you might recognize every part of it as being true. Early in life, the child learns to count to three, which I'll mark in both directions, then later learns to count to five, and eventually all the way to ten, and counts to ten again and again, and the context builds. Eventually, this learner counts by fives, and eventually counts by tens, and has many more opportunities to count by ones, by fives, and by tens, and the context builds. Counting by twos is introduced, which leads to even more opportunities to count by ones, by twos, by fives, and by tens. The idea of doubling is introduced, and number patterns with ones, twos, fives, and tens, and the context builds. When multiplication is formally introduced, the picture examples most often show small groups and small numbers in those groups. Sometimes examples include six groups or groups of six, but they rarely go beyond that. Examples also include multiplying by two, five, or 10. Multiples of three and multiples of four are introduced earlier than some others. Some facts seem to be popular. 10 times 10 is equal to 100. Nine times nine is equal to 81. Others seem to sing and have a rhythm. Five times five is 25, six times six is 36. And exploring nine seems to offer many interesting possibilities. Some multiplication ideas just seem so much easier than others. And that's not a surprise considering all the context. Some seem to be a little more difficult. And then there are others that seem to be most difficult. And then it's clear that some of the multiplication ideas that students most need to work with are still the ones that they have the least opportunity to see and experience. So how do we give students opportunities to work with those ideas and sequences? The day three routine in the multiplication advantage is called part of the chart. The page on the left is completed and serves as an answer key and a reference. The page on the right is the one that the student completes. There are always two lists of multiples, and then there is part of the chart. As I scroll through the charts and the matching answer keys, notice that the sequence on the top will change every time. And also notice how right away this will give students opportunities to work with some of the sequences that they most need to work with. But it doesn't completely isolate those sequences. What part of the chart does is it gives access to those sequences alongside prior learning context. In fact, it's connected to that prior context from other number sequences in unique ways. This gives students opportunities to work with new sequences and connect it to familiar sequences without spending the bulk of the time on sequences that have already been learned.